you don't have to be perfect. And sometimes you can grow through those imperfections. And sometimes those imperfections and those things that we look at as weaknesses or, or things that we might be embarrassed of to show are actually the things that make us strong and beautiful. It's about letting go and allowing the glass to like speak its truth as well. Today, I'm gonna to be doing the impossible. I'm gonna become a professional glass blower in 24 hours. So why glass blowing? Maybe it's because I wanna try something new and maybe because it's literally because I don't think I can do it. I mean, I'm very hot and I don't know what I'm doing. I think when you do things that you only know that you're capable of, you limit yourself. And I just wanted to live a little bit limitless. So we are here at the glass blowing studio, which is Ghost Pepper Glass in Austin. And <laughs> I'm very nervous. I don't know why I'm so nervous, but I guess I'm afraid of like lighting myself on fire because I am accident prone and mixing glass and fire, two things that could very much hurt me into one thing seems maybe like a poor life decision. Luckily I'm gonna have some guidance today, but I'm definitely very nervous. So I found Katie. Katie is the owner of Ghost Pepper Studios in Austin, Texas. And she's been blowing glass for like 17 years. And she's worked at some really prestigious places like the Corning Institute of Glass, which you might know from Blown Away, and then also Pittsburgh Glass Center. Um, so do you know what we're doing here today? No. So my goal is to become a professional glass blower in 24 hours. That is a lofty goal. <laughs> I will do my best to help you get there. You know, if you don't try, you never know if you could succeed. I mean, technically the definition of a professional is getting paid to do it. So let's see where you're at in a day. Katie created three phases to my training. First, getting the basics, initial training, and learning how to just work with glass. I feel like I understand how to put the polka dots on. And that doesn't seem too scary, except that I know I have to put like a hot piece of glass over it and like roll it, which takes coordination. I know I do not have at all. So science is in cool. Here is a giant pool of molten glass. It's kind of the consistency of runny honey. This is 2,050 degrees. Runny honey, that's not a great, sorry. We have a lot of food uh, analogies that are coming like from this class. Kindred spirits. Yeah. Kindred spirits. Turning, turning, turning. Coming on out with clear glass. Now if I stop turning, that is gonna drip right oh, to the floor, gosh. okay? <laughs> so that is why we're always turning. Then we were gonna make some things, a cup, a vase and a pumpkin. And that last part's important because for the final phase of my training, I would be joining a glass production team that's making pumpkins for the holiday season. Let's do it. So before we actually start blowing glass, there are three things I need to do. Put on safety glasses, make sure I'm wearing closed toed shoes, and remind you to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. So the first thing we learned about was the giant thing that melts the glass. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I do not remember the name of this thing. And that's because they just call it Beyonce. It is the source of everything. It is everything, as they say in the studio. And so they've named theirs Beyonce. Then we learned about the glory hole. The glory hole, and yes, I did chuckle when I first heard the name of it. Everything's so sexual in yeah. glass. <laughs> the glory hole, There's pumping. No it, yeah. Got a hot bottom, kind of like me. Yeah. <laughs> is where you actually melt the glass. We also learned about frit, which was colored particles that you can rub on glass to give it color. You don't actually start ever with a colored glass. You start with a clear glass and you apply frit to add color. And there's all different ways you can apply the frit and manipulate the frit to give it color and design. Okay, all right, go ahead and paddle the bottom. Like, fake it or just push it? That's great. Right there, right? You got a nice flat spot. And we're gonna break the glass <gasps> strategically. Okay? okay, we wanna break it right there. Okay. About to break the glass. <laughs> now I'm gonna use a hot torch. Just smooth out that cut. We're gonna put this into our annealing oven. So we just made a vase, and I learned how to apply some color. I learned to apply some frit. Uh, I learned to spank the bottom, and then hit it with a bat. 
It's a very violent uh, process. <laughs> it's a very violent process. But maybe, maybe I'm a dominatrix in another life because I liked it. <laughs> After we had the basics down and I was familiar with the space, we just got to blowing glass. We're making a gothic pumpkin is my next thing. So we're gonna do all over color and then we're gonna blow it into a mold and then put other swirly things on. What if we did the base color, this teal, uh -huh. and then put a sprinkle of black a in A sprinkle it. of black, and maybe a tiny sprinkle of white? Okay. Or is that crazy? Yeah, that's great. And then purple stem? Yeah! Love it, okay. The first time I had that around my head, I was like, this feels illegal. Someone has made a poor life decision and is letting me touch this. Fan? So we're going like, pump, pump the fan, fan. pump it, it up. up. Get you <laughs> moving on the dance floor. But it eased up over time, and I gave myself permission to do something that felt a little impossible. It was I, a little harder than I thought it was gonna be, but I'm gonna crush it. Okay. Gonna get that top 25%. My underneath achiever needs it. And while I was thinking about that, that idea that I felt that I wasn't allowed or wasn't able to, I thought, hmm, I wonder if there's other things in my life that I don't think I'm allowed to do. It was just a passing thought I had, and I thought it was kind of important because that's what I'm here to do today. I'm here to learn about myself by doing something that is scary and new. So, you know, being in social media, there's like a lot of pressure to be perfect. And sometimes it's hard to like show yourself learning something new because there's this expectation that you'll just know how to do it. And I think this was a very humbling experience, um, but it was also very empowering because it showed me that you don't have to be perfect. And sometimes you can, grow through those imperfections and sometimes those imperfections and those things that we look at as weaknesses or, or things that we might be embarrassed of to show are actually the things that make us strong and beautiful. So in glass, like a lot of times those imperfections become your trademarks, become your signatures, become your the thing that actually makes you valuable. Also managing something that's actually very scary for me, which is, you know, fire and and glass, things that are sharp or hurt and can be painful, but then to make something smooth and like useful, it's really empowering it. And I just felt very strong. I felt like I could I could do so much more than sometimes I think I'm capable of. Katie actually talked to me a lot about this and that a lot of her own learning in glass bowing is been learning to accept these moments of quote unquote failures. Frustrate me, like I'd make these pieces and the one that was the worst, in my opinion, was the one that sold first. And I'd go like, why am I trying hard? Why am I trying to work so hard at this if it's not appreciated? And then I, I found kind of peace in it, like, okay, maybe I make the proportions and the shape cup to cup match, so you have a set, but the color pattern in each one, like the swirls you've been doing, it's almost impossible to recreate it cup to cup. And that's what people find beautiful. And they go, oh, I, these match, but I can tell which one I'm drinking out of. You know, so, yeah. There's beauty in being both unique and yet in some ways the same. Yeah. And honestly, I'm, I'm challenging myself with some things personally in my life. And I needed to see this during the training phase that maybe I was approaching them in the wrong way. Maybe they were beautiful opportunities for me to mold and change and improve my life. Break time's over. Now we gotta go back in and actually do the real work. I don't have a lot of faith in myself right now, I'm gonna be real, but we're gonna do it. So they've started production and I'm watching to learn my role. Risa right here is is like my, is gonna be me in like 15 minutes. So they're making a pumpkin and then she's attaching the stem. That's her job and that's gonna be my job in this production team. Um, we're gonna practice a little bit before I actually go and join them, but uh, yeah, that, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually really terrified because I'm a little bit clumsy and like I'm not, I just feel like I don't have the fine motor skills for this or at least maybe I'm not trusting myself enough. So I just keep looking at the fire and I keep going, ouch, because I know I'm going to like burn myself or something. So, so many emotions in my body. So many emotions. After this moment, I realized I could do it. I, I could do it. It was a small task in a bigger picture, 
but I could, I could actually do this role. My muscle memory was still not as good as other people's. The only difference was, is that I believed in myself. And this whole day was really a journey in self-belief. That everything I'd done to this point was really just about learning about what I was capable of doing when I simply believed I could. And with that energy, with that belief, I went into the third piece with a confidence that I hadn't had and was able to participate as part of the production team in a normal capacity, in a role that someone would have held. And I did it. That's it, let's cut it. I have a really hard time like letting go um, and kind of just enjoying the process of making something or the process of experiencing something. I'm always thinking like, how do I capture it for camera? Like right now I want to be like, how do I capture it for camera? Because that's how my mind works. And I really feel like I'm in this, I let go and I enjoyed the progress, not perfection, um, of the project. And I think that that was really healthy for me. How challenging it is. You're basically an unofficial ambassador for glass I am. I think everybody should take a glass blowing class. Literally, I think every, I think it is super de duper empowering, and not anything like you think it would be. You, you go through the whole process thinking it's going to be aggressive and hard because heat and fire and and lava, I guess, are all like aggressive feeling things. But it is zen. It is about slowing down. It is about paying attention. It's about feeling the moment and, and like it's not what you expect at all. Anyway, I loved it. I loved it so much. I'm going to definitely take more classes. Bye. But at the end of the day, sometimes being an expert or being good at something isn't about the numbers. Sometimes we get focused in what we don't have versus all the things we do. It's not about fame, it's not about glory, it's not about awards. Being good at something, anything, is finding someone who appreciates it.